I want us to read some scriptures before we start. And uh, we start with uh, Isaiah 41, 14 to 15. Okay. Do not be afraid, you warm Jacob. Little Israel, do not fear, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. See, I'll make you into a threshing sledge, new and sharp, with many teeth. You'll thresh the mountains and crush them and th reduce the hills to chaff. Um, let's read again Psalms 8, 4 to 6. What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. Two more to go. Psalms 125, 2. I am just going to read the, the, first, the first one before the comma. It says, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, anyway, I can finish. So the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. Psalms 121, verse 1. I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? Thank you. The reason why I'm, um, I was reading that is because uh, this is the year of the threshing the mountains. And I can see that uh, the Psalms is painting the picture of the landscape of Jerusalem. Uh, it looks like it is mountainous as we read that uh, it stands on a hill. And uh, these mountains that we are going to be threshing, and I am assuming the reason why God was saying that uh, he is going to help Israel to thresh the mountains is because uh, wherever they will look, there are mountains. And I think mountains is not one of the landscapes that is a terrain that is very easy to navigate. For the people who come from Ranga, I'm, I'm blessed where I come from, there are no mountains, there are no hills. So it's easy to natembea, to kutembea. But I think for people from Ranga can identify with this, and the people from the mountain. Because a terrain that is mountainous, it's not very easy to walk around. It's not easy to do anything, even the farming, as much as they do a lot of farming there. And uh, when I was thinking about the mountains, the things that was coming to my mind was uh, mountains could be obstacles. And the reason why we are threshing the mountains is because we don't need them in our way. So if we don't need them where we want to plant, we don't need them where we want to have roads, that's one of the reasons why we are going to, to thresh these mountains. And uh, some of these mountains that are happening in our lives, I think we have seen them some of them could be the, uh, the high unemployment in our country. High levies, taxes, drugs, killings. And another word that I don't know how to pronounce it. LGKB2. Who's are the... In Nitro Evo, something like that. But I know you know what it is. And they saw endless and endless of mountains that we are facing. And so realistically, if we have to move to the other side of life... If you have to move to where our promise is, where our blessing is, we need to thresh those mountains. And how are we threshing them? We are going to thresh them because the Lord has said what in Isaiah? He is going to help us. The Lord is going to help us. He is the one who is making us that sledge that is going to thresh the mountains. And when I was looking at this, I realized that uh, some of the things that look like mountains in my life, might not be mountains on your life. And I think this is a, it just seems like a, somebody will be wondering, is that really a mountain? Is, really a, is that a mountain? Because if you are looking for school fees, for those who are in high school, that is not a mountain for me, but I'm looking for fees in other schools. So we have different mountains, and the way we are going to thresh them will be different. And the way we look at the mountains is the way you feel that thing is so difficult for you is the way you are going to apply equal pressure for the mountain to go. If the mountain is small, I think sometimes we don't, we don't, uh, we don't have a problem. Because if uh, this is a mountain, for example, we'll be afraid of this mountain. 
Is anybody afraid of this? This is the mountain I'm talking about. Will you be afraid of that mountain? But if the mountain is this high, will you pass? You will not be able to pass. And so, that is the reason why the Lord is telling us that uh, he is going to help us. And uh, the reason why God is going to help us is because the mountain that we are facing, the mountains of drugs, the mountains of sicknesses, the mountains of cancer, we can't do it alone. And uh, as we read in Psalms 8, verse 4, the psalmist here is procla proclaiming that God is the only one who is able, able to build up people of weakness like us. We are just worms and uh, people who are very weak, but when we work together with God, we get that force to, to oppose every enemy, to oppose every, every mountain that comes to us. He is the one who is going to change us because most of it, it is the state of our mindsets. It is the state of uh, not wanting to change. But when you present yourself to be changed, to be made a sledge, I think it is an intentional decision that you are making, which means that uh, you are willing to be transformed. And because we are weak, and God knows that we are weak, he is the one who has offered to make us and to help us. I think when I read before that uh, beginning of that uh, Isaiah, the book, I did not see anywhere the man praying, God help me, make me this ledge. But because God is our creator, knew that we are weak and he offered us to, to help us so that we may, we may become the, the people that he wants us to be. And uh, if you look at uh, Psalms, you see the position that God has placed mankind very high above everything. He says that uh, we, are, we have the dominion, we are, we are even above every creature. And if you are above every creature, surely, why are we scared? Because that's where God wants us. So, uh, as we are, my, my topic today is responding to the invitation. God has given us an invitation for us to be able to thresh the mountain. Because we want to be made to thresh the mountain. The invitation is... How my question is, it's, you can frame it as a question or you can just look at it as a, how, is a, how am I supposed to position myself for me to be able to thresh the mountain and for me to be able to do what the Lord wants me to do. And uh, one of the things that we need to do and uh, that I am willing to do is change of attitude. If we still uh, remain with the attitude that was not uh, that we are defeated people, there is no way we are going to thresh the mountains. There is no way we are going to bring ourselves and avail ourselves and say, I am here. I want to be changed. I want to be made that uh, threshing sledge. Because many times, we are the ones who talk ourselves out of what God has said for us. God says, you are above sicknesses. You are above and not beneath. You are, you, are, you are not a tail, but we want to, be, to remain always being the tails because we are not able to convince ourselves. And I think the shift that I want us to have here of the attitude is I can convince Rachel that we can do it. If you convince that person that you see in the mirror every day and tell them, because that is the first force that you have to conquer for you to change the attitude. The attitudes that we have one of them is because we have built that attitude for us. We need to look inwardly and face those fears, the shortcomings, the past things that are holding us down, the things that people said we cannot do. Why are you worried about what people say about you? And many times, they don't even tell you when you are there. They say when you are not there. And then somebody tells you, I had somebody saying you are this and this and you are worried. If, this, that's, if that was a fact, it would have, they would have come and told you. Because anyone who wants to tell you something to change or to help you, they tell you to your presence so that you can change and you can become better. But if somebody is saying something outside where you are, please let it remain with them. That is their problem. That is their opinion. The opinion of other people does not matter in our lives. Changing attitudes means taking a step and walking a different journey than you have walked before. You've walked before. For example, if the Lord says today I'm going to give you a house, what should be my attitude? 
What should be your attitude? You are sick, you are in bed, and God says, today I want to heal you. What are you supposed to do? What is the attitude that you are supposed to take? To say, oh God, you know I've been sick for, from 2006, and I've not been uh, getting uh, healed. You are supposed to say yes. And when the doctor comes and says that uh, they've received a new cure, you say, I'll be the first person to take as a, to take that medicine because this new cure would have been found because God wanted to heal you. God wants to give you a house. You say, oh, ata kwetu wakuna nyumba. Mungu amekuliza mambo ya kwenyu. Mungu anataka kukupea nyumba. So what you need to do is to go to where banks are and look for a loan and start building. It's for you to go and start looking to these people who sell land, estate, engines. And ask them, by the way, land is squeezing at Waka Pesangapi. Auna Pesa. But God says He's going to give you a house. So if He says He's going to give you a house, it's because He's going to give it to you. So think like the Lord says, walk like what the Word of God says, and do as the Word of God says. The next thing that we need to do is to be focused. Focused means being disciplined, focused me means being. Uh, setting a goal that you are working towards. And I am very sure that if you tell yourself, I am going to do this thing, there is no force, not even a demon can move you from what you've decided to do. Not any persuasion is going to ask to tell you that uh, you can't climb that, uh, that mountain and you want to climb the mountain. Who is going to stop you? It is still with you. It is still within us. Because the threshing is individual. The threshing that I'm going to receive is for me to fight my mountains. Yes, my children might be beneficiaries as I'm fighting them. My people around me, my nation will be a beneficiary. But it will start with me. It will start with you. Let's focus internally and look at, uh, at uh, what is happening. We are going to stop moving with the people who are going to distract us. Because you have made a decision that I am doing this. When I was thinking about how somebody can be focused, I thought about the, the story of Naaman from 2 Kings verse 5. Naaman was, uh, was an army officer and he, he had leprosy. And uh, in his house, there was a house manager who spoke to the wife and uh, told him, if only my master knows there's a prophet of God who is somewhere who can, who can heal him, I wish you would go and visit him. And you can imagine that Shane, it is the house manager who knows there's a prophet somewhere, and the, the house manager goes through the, the, the wife of the army officer, and he was sent to go and, and, and look for the man of God. And either way, because leprosy was not something that anybody wanted to have, uh, he decided to go. Willingly or not willingly, but he decided to go. The focus was on what? The focus was on healing because he did not, he did not want the leprosy. The way the message was communicated might not have been, uh, why is not another messenger telling, why is not another officer who is telling me? How can a message from uh, a house manager help me? And I pray that uh, we may even change our attitudes with the house managers that we have. When God wants to use somebody, when God wants to send a message for you, he is not looking for the qualified people. He is not, he's not looking for those people who, have, uh, who, have, um, who are high in the offices. He is not looking for managers. He is not looking for supervisors. He is looking for the file available vessel. And if it's that vessel, it is you. When you get that message, deliver it. Whether it is accepted or it's not accepted, it is not your problem. The message has been delivered. And because God is doing that, as I go back to the story of Nahaman, he went and he went to, the, to meet the man of God. Guess what happened? The man of God did not go out to meet him. Is that not a discouragement? Was he not supposed to go home and say, you eventually do what? You eventually die. But he did not, uh, the man of God did not go out. And of course, as a human being, he got distracted, he got annoyed. And uh, I'm thinking if he was a Kenyan and Gesema, who you, 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 who 
he got annoyed. But the people that he walked with, because when you have to remain in your focus, there are people who are called uh, destiny helpers. There are people that you are working with uh, like sticks. There are pillars in your life that are supposed to be working with you. And they asked him, Swally, even me, I think I would have been in that same problem. And they persuaded him to go and wash himself. But the message was also not very clear because he was told, uh, he was told, go wash yourself seven times in Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you'll be cleansed. And I would wonder, seven times. Come and imagine, wet. if it was wetness that was going to change you. But the focus is what matters. Because it's not a matter of being wet and then you are healed. It is the way you are going to obey. It is the focus. Where are you putting your focus? If you put your focus on the what you want to achieve, you are going to achieve it. And the man and the, the officer went and dipped himself one, two, six, seven. And he came out without leprosy. Was he focused? Was he not focused? But the question is, what is, what is it that is holding us back? What is it that has been holding us back? I want to get better. I am sick. I want my children to go to the next level in their lives. And somebody is telling you that, uh, you know, one thing that uh, makes us distracted is also in the mind as well. You've lost your job. Ile kasi hiko ni akusa mananasi. Na inaiza lipa school fees. Because there are people who have done that and uh, they paid school fees for their children. But unasema, ay, mimi siyezi kuwa a manager na nirudi kukata skuma. Na mnagani? Where is your focus? Is your focus for your children to do better? Is your focus to get better? Is, where, where is your focus? If you are told today, and I think I've seen people doing this, your healing is coming from a root. Na hiyo muti napatikana Mount Kenya. Because your focus is what? Your focus is getting healed. So let's remain focused on the end goal. Forget about every other things that are here. Forget about leaving your house, going all the way to Jordan to dip yourself seven times. As if like uh, where you are coming from, there are no rivers. But the river that was supposed to heal you is the river that you are supposed to obey. Actually, it was not the river. It was following the instructions. Sometimes the instructions may look very weird. But once you follow them, you are going to get to your end goal. You are going to get to where you want to go. Do you remember the woman with the issue of the blood? As I kept on reading this story in Mark 5, 25-34, Somehow, I convinced myself that was not the first time that he attempted. She attempted to go and touch uh, the helm. I am sure she tried to go and go and say, I am here, pray for me, Jesus, so that I may get healed. Because that's the way Jesus was healing before. Jesus would say, you will cry, son of David, son of David, come and heal me. But for this lady, the last day that she said, today I'm not going home with this issue, she pressed on, she pressed on. And she only touched the helm of the garment. She did not even touch Jesus himself. Because she said today, I am focused on healing. And because I'm getting my healing today, she touched that helm of the garment. What is your focus today? What are you focusing on? What is this mountain that you want God to move from you? What is it that God wants you to heal? Is it that way, world child? Akuji nyumbani, ujui mali mtoto yuko, Na uko Nairobi, na ea uko Nairobi, lakini ya muonani. What is it that is pushing you? What is it that is pushing you to seek God? What is this mountain that you are asking God to push for you? The Lord is saying today, I've come to help you. I have come to help you. There is no mountain that is so big that I cannot move. There is no mountain that is so big that I cannot help you and empower you to move. God is moving those mountains. There's uh, another thing that we need to do, and it is uh, believing God and taking him at his word. It is believing God and taking him at his word. What that means is that uh, we are not doubting what the Lord is saying. We are not doubting. If he says you are going to be healed, you start declaring I'm going to be healed. 
When you start saying that uh, you are going to drive a car, you start declaring that you are going to drive a car. You start going to driving schools. You start uh, asking Rachel, can I drive your car today? Can I send you somewhere? Because if you want to drive a car, sis kuilo utapewa yako, ata kama ni aloto umewin. Utaitua haji hapo umepewa. You are not supposed to go and buy your car and take somebody else to go and drive it for you home. You go buy your car, sit on the driver's seat and drive it home. Why? You are taking God's word. At, uh, you are taking the word of God as, as it says. Believe on, in everything that God says. Do not think of anything that people are telling you. Do not be persuaded to move away from, um, from uh, your goal and from your destination. You take God from his, uh, at his word and the Lord is going to, to help you. God is good. Every time God is good. And his uh, goodness and his greatness is for us to enjoy. It is for us to enjoy. The many times I've read the Bible, sijaona mahali tutaenda mbinguni na magari. Hata ile mashini kubwa. Hata ile utanunua kesho and the rapture starts tomorrow. Imagine utaiacha tu kabla unjeingia ndani. This is the time we are supposed to enjoy what the Lord wants us to do. So take God at his word. Take God at his word. If you remember this story of uh, the two blind men in Matthew 9, 27 and that one. Uh, we will not read, but we can read that one. It's, it's a long one. They received their sight because they believed God. And Jesus went on from there. Two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he, had, when he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. What was Jesus' question? Do you believe that I can do this? Because sometimes you may follow people and you don't even believe that uh, when the ministry team is praying with us here, Wacha tu niende, lakini sijui kama huyu anesa niombea hiyo ishida yangu ikaisha. Tumeitwa tu tuenda kwa ministers, to be ministered. Wacha tu niende, lakini huyu sithani kama. So if you are coming, come because you are believing. You are believing because it's not the minister who does it. It is God who is going to do it. It is Jesus Christ who is able to do it. And Jesus Christ works with these men and women who stand here. The other day I had um, Bishop Mark saying something that... Uh, made me very happy that uh, he is the headquarter of God and you are the headquarter of God. If, be, if, uh, if a bishop is the headquarter of God, our bishop and the other bishops, we are also the headquarter of God because God is going to use your hands to heal these people. God is going to use your mouth to declare what is going to benefit the, world, the people of God. So ours is to believe. Jesus they asked this man, do you believe I can do this thing. And they said yes. And the rest is history. They went home. They left their homes blind. They left that church where the indoors, where they went to, I, I assume it was in church where he went indoors. They left their thing. I even wonder how they knew the door, where the door was. Because they went blind. I am sure they went following people. But when they, their eyes were opened, they might even gone through the pulpit because they did not wear, know where the door was. So let's believe what the word of God says. Sometimes we, we miss the point because we are not believers, because we are doubters. So today I am declaring that every mountain that has blinded us not to see the greatness of God, it is being removed today in the name of Jesus. It is cast in the sea in the name of Jesus Christ. The mountain that we fear, we are commanding you today to be put in the sea in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we also have something else that we need to do so that we can uh, respond to the, to the calling of God, that we have to identify the mountain, the mountain that we are facing. My mountain is not your mountain. My mountain might, might be school fees. Your mountain might be uh, houses. Your mountain might be a car. Your mountain might be praying for your children. It is the, our people who are not saved. So, it is ourselves to identify the mountain and go straight to where we are going to get the help uh, so that we can overcome this mountain. If you read the story of Anna, Anna, Mama Samuel, 
the siali sindi ya mama Samuel angekuwa huku siku hizi tulikuwa tunamuita mama Sam <laughs> angekuwa tungekuwa tunamuita mama Sam so if you remember han han hana had only one the biggest mountain was one which was a child a son because she was barren for many days and every day every year in year in year out she went to shiloh and she went and gave a sacrifice she went every year she went you go in february unarudi aja conceive anaenda tena anja conceive so for people to declare that she was barren and for a long time and uh, penina the the co-wife hiyo si waluya co-wife co-wife si waluya kwa waluya but uh, from where come people who are married together they are called co-wives siri <laughs> ama wanaitangwa co-wives so the co-wife who was the uh, penina kept on had a lot of, uh, of uh, prejudice and i think even today we have seen where we have polygamous marriages where one of the ladies has not been blessed to have ch- children there is a lot of trauma because they've not had children even where women you are married alone and you do not have a child we keep on asking eh na wewe umekaa sana na wewe umekaa sana kwani mtoto atakuja lini and uh, if you are lucky like me you are blessed with girls and eh na huyo kijana kwani ulisai baba yako na baba yangu amezaliwa why do you need to so that will not be one of the mountains that i'm going to address in my life i am not looking forward to address the mountain of uh, bringing wambua back and wambua is still alive so let's focus on the mountains that we are facing so anna went every year to give sacrifice she continued going and going until one day she said this year things are going to be different and she went she did not eat uh, that's what the bible records she went to the temple akaenda kanisani and she prayed those crazy prayers aliomba akaomba hey even the man of god came and thought hey huyo naye ameleta ulevi kanisani because the situation was not something that you can understand so if you have failed you have identified your mountain and you are failing yourself to be threshed na kuambia you, you can even walk without clothes because umechoka umechoka the situation is so tiring and you don't want to go through it again and again and again and the lord is saying i am going to help you if it is this son that you want i'm going to give you this son if it is this school fees i'm going to give you this school fees there is nothing that is so difficult for god there is nothing that god is not going to do for us so my sister my brother what is it that has you have been asking god day in day out god it is this my drunkard husband it is this abusive son that i have it is this son who is 50 years and still in my house he is not even getting married it is never too late with god it is never too late with god god is coming true for through for us how long have you asked god to revive that business and every time you put new stock in aisha every time you put new stock the business nobody comes even to your shop to ask what is it that you've stocked the lord has come today the lord has brought the hope is here with us let's grab it let's identify it and stand in that rightful place and ask god to thresh that mountain for you how long have you given a seed a sacrifice for your children's employment for your families for your family members to be born again for lord to change the situation in your family ai awo hiyo hiyo family ni umaskini sana that is not your portion my sister and my brother hiyo hiyo declaration si yako anymore because the lord has promised his help and today i want to declare that no power no human no thoughts that are going to arise today starting today and accuse you because the lord is coming and the lord is going to help us for we are blessed everyone who is blessed cannot be cursed and we are blessed beyond being cursed beyond curse so today arise and say i am blessed i am blessed there is no curse that is coming near me we are disconnected from every curse 
because the Lord has blessed us. The blood of Jesus Christ has, has cleansed us. So the moment you get born again, you are a new creature. The hold is gone. The hold is completely gone. You might look like the way you are before I was born again. The hold has gone. It is that radical. God is changing us like that. God is changing us like that. So it is, we are blessed and we cannot be cursed. Anything that they have said, family, it is not arising. If the person is dead, how will the curse arise and they get to you surely? How will the curse arise and get to you? You are blessed beyond measure. No weapon that is formed against you that is going to prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed and nothing else can stand on your way because the Lord has declared that uh, you are what? You are blessed. Balaam, you can ask Balaam when he was asked to go and curse God's people. And those God's people are not different from us. They were the children of Abraham. And today I'm looking at the children of Abraham. Come on. This is what you are talking Abraham. And because we are sons and daughters of Abraham, we cannot be cursed. We have been blessed. We have been blessed forever and ever blessed. So nothing is coming. Nothing is coming against the blessings that the Lord has given us. And, uh, hey, okay. Eh, Nepal Ju. Nepal Ju ni meona kitu. But it is well. Because uh, it is well. And, uh, the other thing that I want us to think of as uh, we are responding to this invitation from God, because it's God who is helping us to do, to do, is helping us to become sledges that uh, we are able to thresh the mountains. Uh, the things that I want us to do, uh, we will read them from Revelation uh, chapter 2 and uh, verse 3, and I'm just going to read a, a couple of uh, verses. And these are the letters to the seven churches. The church of Ephesus, the church of Simona, Pergamum, Thyatira, and, and the rest. So we are reading um, Revelation. And the reason why we are reading this is because, um, like I said, we are weak people. And just like those seven churches, we are, there are things that we have done so well. There are things that we've been invited by God to go and do, and we have done them. But Mingi, including me, Nilia to Jafanya, but Lord is still gracious. He has not revoked his blessings upon us. He has not taken his love away from us. He is still giving us a chance, a chance today. As long as it's called today, we have a chance for us to go back and to complete those things. So there are things that we have done well. There are things that we've not done well. And that's what he did with the churches in, uh, in uh, the seven churches. He had some things against them. And God has some things against us. So let's see what uh, the Lord has ag had against these churches. And as we are looking at this, this is a reflection of our lives. Because I know we are not perfect. I know not all of us, we, are, we have done this. We have done many things that are good. In Revelation chapter 2, to the church of Ephesus, the Lord says, he said, actually, acknowledge what he said. Yes, I, um, he said, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. Isn't that not a good thing? Because they were persevering in the word of God. They could not tolerate wicked people. They, are, they, are tested, they have tested who claim to be apostles and those who are not. But I have this against you. You have forsaken your first love. And if you've forsaken your first love, the God gives them a chance to come back. And there's a promise. To the one who is victorious, I'll give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in paradise of God. He knows our works. There are things that we've not done, but if we repent and come back to God, you'll give us the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in paradise. To the church of Simona, he says, I know your affliction. And many of us have suffered because of, uh, because of the word of God, preaching at the ad, ad circumstances. 
and the Lord knows all that we have done. But he had this one thing against them. Um, because he has a, they be faithful, and then he has a, do not be afraid what you have done. Okay, the Lord told them to be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as a victor's crown. And he says, to the one who is victorious, will not act at all by the second death. Yes, you've suffered on this world. you preached the word of God in the hard circumstances. You've given your resources. And you keep on giving your resources to help them. Just know this one thing. You have just hurt in this life, but you are not going to hurt in the second life. That is a promise from God. For the church of Pangaman, he says, I know where you live, where Satan has, has his throne. You remain true to my name. You do not denounce, renounce your faith in me, not even the days of Antipas. That's what the church of, uh, uh, the church of um, Pangamam did. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some of you who, do, who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin so that they ate food sacrificed to idols. My sisters and my brothers, as much as the Lord has offered to help us, if we remain in sinful life, we cannot be mountain threshers. We are not going to thresh even the hills. At Aziles Amuchua, you cannot do it as long as you are living in, in sin. But the Lord says to the one who is victorious, I will give some of the Eden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Who is willing to receive that name? That name God is giving to us. And you are the only one who is going to know that name. Because he's the one who is inscribing that name on that stone and is given to you. To the church of the, the Atira, he had one thing uh, against them. You tolerated that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and eating of the sacrificed food to idols. But he has a promise again. There is no sin that God cannot forgive. There is nothing that God cannot do away with when we confess. Do not write yourself out and say, This is the promise and he said, To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. That one will rule them with iron scepter and dash them to pieces like pottery. I will give also to that one a morning star. Mimi ningependelea kupata yo morning star. Ningependelea kufanya kupata yo morning star. And as we are doing that, the only thing that we are asking, we are being asked to do is just to repent. It's just to repent. And also to the rest of the other, the other churches, uh, God has given them an opportunity to come back. And because God has helped us to he has helped us to, to help us. He has promised to help us. I want us to arise. I want us to arise as we are asking ourselves a few questions. As uh, Just like the seven churches, there are things that we have not done. There are things that the Lord has against us and is inviting us to repentance. That's what he says in uh, Revelation 3.20. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, open the door. I'll come in and eat with that person and they will be with me. The Lord is knocking. The Lord is knocking and he's telling us, open the door. If you open that door because you've heard his voice, the Bible also tells us if you hear the voice, do not harden your heart. This is a reflective judgment because when we judge ourselves, we are not going to be judged. Many times we have erred, we have missed the point, we have disappointed ourselves, we have done things because of our attitudes. But remember, God is giving us that chance. He is saying today, if you hear his voice, open that door and you'll come in and you'll dine with you. My sisters and brothers, remember one day is like a thousand years with God. And those are thousand years is just like one day with God. This is the time. Come now. 
when it is still called today. The Lord is ready to wipe you clean. Akusavishe ubaki kuwa clean. Akuwashe kabisa. Iso than bizote everything that you think that the Lord cannot uh, cannot clean. The Lord is able. I want to um, to ask the ministry team to come because today is the day that we are denouncing any of those things that have held us down. We are repenting. Please come. It is called today. Come and connect with somebody. A prayer of agreement. We need help when we are threshing these mountains. The Bible tells us, say to this mountain, how are we saying to this mountain? We are speaking. We are supposed to say it to this mountain through our mouths. And if you feel your mouth cannot speak it well, come and agree with the ministers. Come believing that the ministers are able to help us. Together we are strong. Together we are going to push the mountain. Come, we rewrite our narrative together. The Lord is able. The Lord is able. Yes, we have sinned. All of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But the Lord is still here. The Lord is inviting us. He is saying he is not giving up in you. The Lord is not giving up in you. He does not want any one of us to perish. The Lord wants all of us to come to his glory. The Bible tells us that what we agree on earth, it is agreed in heaven. Please come and denounce that, uh, that anything that has held you, it is going to be denounced in heaven. Come and lose yourself from the sicknesses. Come and lose yourself from the fear. The fear of have known. The fear of the words that have been spoken. The fear of the witches. The fear of the wizards. The fear of sorcerers. They are not strong. They are not stronger than our God. The Lord is inviting us. The Lord is telling us, if you remain, you hold to the end, I'll give you the right to sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and he sat on his father's throne. Come, it is our time to come and agree with somebody because we would want to sit on the throne together with God. He says to the one who is victorious, I'll make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they live. It will, I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of, the, of my God, the new Jerusalem. He will also write on them a new name. If you are looking to get a new name, if you are looking forward for God to lift you from that burden, from those, those areas of rent, come, come and agree with somebody.